All right, no turning back. Here we go. Hey, everybody. It is the Drive to School podcast. I'm Pastor Goodman, and joining me today again is Paige. How's it going? Pretty good. How's it going with you? I'm all right. So, uh, Paige, we've been doing something called Mind the Gap. We've been talking about uh, kind of controversial subjects in the world because we actually want to to help and not just win arguments with people who are wrong. We want to talk about things that the world is struggling with every bit as much as Christians, and we want to find a way to talk about it so that if you don't already believe it, you might learn something. And if you already believe it, it's not just sort of reinforcing that you're right, but encouraging us to sort of find a, a way of talking about it that, that builds up and encourages people to learn more about a thing instead of just shuts it down with one-liners. Because like, it makes you feel good to win an argument on the internet, but does it actually help the other side? Right, yeah. There's that fine line of like, even if you are right, it doesn't mean you need to use those one-liners. Like you said, on the internet, it's not very helpful. You can be right and still a jerk um, and maybe maybe not lean into that identity. Absolutely. So uh, let's let's pick a nice, simple, uh, low key topic today. Uh, go. Homosexuality. Well done, Paige. Well done. This is not going to raise any flags. All right. So <laughs> this this is. This is an important one, though, um, and I think it's important not just for the church uh, and not just for society, um, because if we're going to be honest, by liberal estimates, 10 percent of the population has some sort of same sex attraction. Um, it's, that's not a, a, a huge subset of the population, but I think it's important because it's a question of identity. Like this, this comes down to the very core of who a person thinks that they are, and that's worth addressing because identity actually matters very much to the Christian. How do we identify as Christians? I mean, all of our identity is wrapped up in Christ. So, I mean, that's pretty much the simplest way to put it without nitpicking out different things. It's like, oh, a Christian reads their Bible. Oh, a Christian prays. It's all wrapped up in the Christ and in Christ Jesus. That's important because that's something that's already completed. Because you can say a Christian reads their Bible and now I feel bad. And I say a Christian prays and now you feel bad because like, you're right, I ought to do this more. And then when you get into not just sort of the things that you ought to be doing, but the things that you are. So you can you can even dive into the idea of, of what it is to be a Christian man or a Christian woman. And again, you sort of have a whole bunch of standards or law that, well, I don't perfectly fulfill because I am not Jesus and neither are you. And so if this is sort of the only way to identify as a Christian, we're always going to be lacking and always going to be striving for more. But you said our identity is in Christ, which means fulfilled and enough. This, this is important that, that we identify first and foremost as baptized, because then when I say, well, a Christian prays, you can say, well, I, I ought to pray more, but thanks be to God, Jesus prays for me. Exactly. So what's the difference between uh, sort of a, an identity that, that is built on the things that you are doing or, or trying to exemplify and an identity that is Jesus pouring out mercy? Ooh, um, so that's a really good question. Um, Think about it when you look in the mirror, like which one is actually easier to deal with in the mirror? I mean, when I look in the mirror like, and I see myself, I just see like, all the flaws and things like, oh, why did I do my hair like that? Oh, why did I do my makeup like that? Oh, why am I wearing this shirt? But then you kind of remember it's like, well, either way, Christ died for me. And that's so comforting. Like, it doesn't matter what I'm wearing or if I said something stupid 20 minutes ago, like it's all wrapped up in Christ and that perfection that is already one for us. Right. So you can look at yourself and then say, I am whole and I am enough, even though I am a sinner because of Jesus. So if you were to take that away now, I just want you to, to sort of like, let's try and see this from the other side. You identify as um, homosexual, that, that you have same sex attraction. Um, and, and so if this is this is the core of, of sort of your your being and then you were looking in the mirror and you were being told, well, that can't be holy and that can't be enough and that can't be loved and that can't be proper. Like, can you understand why you, you might flee from this? And it gets to be even worse. You raised a really, really good point to me. Um, you said it's, it's one thing to argue this from the scriptures, but what about somebody who doesn't believe in the Bible? Yeah, like um, we hold the Bible as authoritative. Like everything, like Bible says, all right, we got it. But someone who doesn't hold to the Christian faith, or maybe they have a loose hold on it, um, they don't see the Bible as authoritative. 
or not as authoritative as we see it. Like maybe they're reading in their own personality or they're trying to nitpick, like this is what I want out of this, but this can't be true because I don't like it. So we just have to be really careful and kind of understanding where that person is coming from, what their background is so that we can do everything in love and kind of make sure that we're not ostracizing our neighbor. Right, because if all you're going to do is give laws from a book that somebody doesn't believe in, they're not going to hear the laws. Um, but at the end of the day, if we talked about this as a question of identity, you just told me your identity isn't rooted in the law, in what you are doing, but in the gospel, in, in who Jesus is for you. Um, I, I think this has to be sort of the subject of the, the conversation when we talk about same-sex attraction or to people who struggle with it. Um, because really, if, if their whole identity is under attack, like understand why they might be on the defensive. Like I, I understand that if, if you don't struggle with this, this uh, temptation, that this might be just a doctrinal point to you that that is important because it's true, but this is somebody's whole identity under attack. And if you're not going to provide a different one, then I understand why they have their guard up and don't want to talk to you about it, especially from a book they don't even believe in in the first place. Right. Because um, especially with all of the taboo that's still around homosexuality, like many people who are homosexual have been ostracized by their friends, their family, like even their past romantic partners. So we need to make sure that we're going um, to them in a graceful manner, like graceful, so that we can really like get to the heart of what they're feeling, understand why they identify like this, and just kind of be their neighbor, be that help, be that light that they'll need because it's something, it's a struggle. Like, even if they don't see it as a struggle, identity is a struggle that everyone has. So just because theirs is a lot more public than maybe, oh, I don't like how my hair is today. Like that, like you just really need to lead with grace. Right. And it's, it's not even just sort of, I don't like how my hair looks, but even like, I don't feel like a whole person when I stand here in church because, and then you can lay out all those secret sins that I can't talk about publicly, that there's just happen to sort of be something that, that is, is out there. If, if you talk about grace though, um, the idea might simply start with this. Jesus died for you. And we want you to be closer to Jesus, not farther from Jesus. And that won't happen by you making choices, but by him chasing you down. In the same way that like, you don't choose Christianity, we cannot by our own reason or strength believe in Jesus Christ, our Lord, or come to him, but the Holy Spirit calls us by the gospel, then why is it that just because you struggle with this particular sin, you have to choose Jesus, like you have to choose to, to, to run away from something. Instead, Jesus chases us down, he, he grabs hold of us, he gives faith to us. And when you reverse that, just because somebody's sin is different than yours, well, it's not going to work because they cannot by their own reason or strength do it either. Yeah, it would be kind of like, it would be terrifying for anybody if the roles were reversed and you have to chase Christ instead of Christ chasing you. Like, and that's kind of like, if you come in with that big law, like you're doing this wrong, you're flipping that table and you're flipping the gospel completely on its head and you're not giving the gospel for them. You're not giving Christ for them. You're actually kind of taking it away, which is really sad. Yeah, and this is not saying to do away with the law, but it's to identify what the church is. The church is a whole bunch of sinners that Jesus died for that look for help in him. And so you, you can say then this is a sin, but if you're not going to say this is a sin that Jesus died for, and you are a sinner that Jesus died for, and Jesus loves you, then it comes, it, it, it ends up as a very different conversation. Um, the, the question isn't whether or not uh, homosexuality is a sin. The scriptures are actually very clear. I know people sort of try and find ways and loopholes and, and sort of... Uh, well, they, they walk into the scriptures with the idea, I don't want this to be true, so what kind of loopholes can I find? Because the word homosexuality isn't in the Bible. Like, if I told you that there was a bird that liked bread and said quack and swims in ponds, you wouldn't be able to figure out it was a duck. Um, or, or that, you know, you can sort of play with uh, the entomology of words when you have to ignore the whole practices of, of the societies, ones who lived inside of those words and practiced them, like you could do away with it. What if instead of like trying to wrestle with the scriptures, instead we can look for Jesus in them? Because if you're reading the scriptures to not find guilt, it's very different from reading the scriptures to find hope. We want to find Jesus. Right. Like if you're just reading through the scriptures, like you said, trying to find those loopholes, trying to make yourself feel better by ignoring certain parts, then what good even is turning to the scriptures? If you're ignoring the parts 
that remind you why you need Jesus. Right. And this is, I think, actually at the core of the, the whole discussion, like Christians uh, who don't struggle with same sex attraction only talk about it this way because we want more people to have Jesus for the same things that we do. So this is at its core. It's a six commandment issue the, the you shall not commit adultery issue. And, and we know all the things that get wrapped up in this. But what if we talked about homosexuality the same way we talked about pornography, the same way we talked about marriage, that like this is a thing that's going on in your life? Not so that I can chase you out of the church, but because we actually want Jesus to be a part of your life for this thing that's a part of your life. Right. Like, because, um, like you said, it's a sixth commandment issue. We're not going to tell someone that has committed adultery. Oh, you're an adulterer. You can't be in the church because your sin is bigger than my sin. And I've only done this or that. It's like, it's very hypocritical. Um, so we do really need to remind ourselves that like, We've all fallen short of the glory of God. That's why Jesus had to die on a cross to save us. And he did. Like that's, It's not even just, here's a whole bunch of sinners. You can be one too, but here's hope. Um, and this is the, the reason that I want to be called a sinner because these things are wrong with me and I can't look at myself in the mirror whether or not I have the name for it. But here I actually have a different identity. And at the end of the day, this, this might be sort of the way that we want to talk about homosexuality. It's, it's still a question of identity. It, it's that somebody looks at themselves and says, the whole thing that you should know about me, the biggest th takeaway you, you have about me is what I want to do with my downstairs parts. Not, not, not am I loved? Not like even, even the people who don't agree with our religion should say there's more to my personality, my soul, my, my being than what I want to, to um, have intercourse with. What if your identity was baptized? And then you can be a sinner who struggles with, but is baptized. That that has to be the thing that that guides us here. Right. At the same time, saint and sinner. Like we struggle with everything. Like sin is a natural part of us because of the fall, unfortunately. But like thanks be to God that we have grace in Christ Jesus, that he died for our sins. He died for every sin. It's not like he said, mm, homosexuality is too bad. I'm not dying for that one. Or, oh, murder's too bad. I'm not dying for that one. You guys are out of luck. Like, no, it's for everyone. We are baptized. We are in Christ. Right. And when we start there and, and, and there too, um, it gets a lot easier because then we can talk about homosexuality the same way we talk about any other sin. It's something that Jesus died for. Um, the reason I think that it gets singled out um, in some cases is because it's, it's one that doesn't go away. Like you, you, most people are not serial killers, even though they hold hatred deep within their hearts and find a new way to hate and be angry every day. Um, but, but rather, it's, it's sort of the, this thing like, well, if you were born this way, it must be okay. Or if you can't just stop doing it, it there needs to be a loophole because, well, Christianity is stopping sin. Neither of those things are true. Like, think about it. You were born a sinner, right? Mm -hmm. Or are your favorite sins my favorite sins? No. <laughs> That, that Jesus died for all of our sins. The, it's not that I was born this way, so it must be okay, but rather the wages of sin is death. And so I was born heading towards the grave. The hope for this isn't that I can quit all my sins and escape it, but rather that the free gift of God is life everlasting in Christ Jesus, our Lord. For all the things killing me, whether or not I like them, whether or not I can see what's wrong with them, Jesus died to save me from them and you too, and, and the whole world. Yeah, they just... Because like someone has a vice that you can't see or someone has a vice that's very public, it doesn't change the grace that we have in Christ. It doesn't save or change the saving like redemption that we have in the cross. It doesn't change any of that. So can I ask a harder question from you then? Sure. <laughs> can you be gay and Christian? Yeah. But what's your identity then? Your identity is in Christ, and that's, I mean, your identity is not in your sin. Your identity is in Christ. So you can be gay and Christian and recognize that Christ is the leading factor. And when you kind of look and reevaluate and be like, okay, Christ for me, what, what does this mean? Why am I doing this? Then it kind of gives you that hold and that strength in Jesus and in all of the promises that he has for us, for you, for everyone. And you can kind of go, yeah, I, I see that now. 
Right. And that's not saying that if you're just Christian enough, the temptation to sin will go away and your, you, you'll, your, your wants will change. And that's not saying, well, if you're a Christian, you might as well lean into those wants. Uh, neither of those things. This is not license to sin because license is a law word. Um, it, it, it's, it's freedom to actually breathe and not have to be identified by the things you're trying to be, but by the things Jesus has already done for you. And that means even when you still struggle with a sin, you're a sinner that Jesus died for. And it means that you don't need to use Jesus as a crutch to get to the things you really want as if you don't have a God. You have a God in Jesus. This isn't lean further into sin or identify in sin. This is identify in Christ and everything that that means. Yeah, exactly. Let's start there. That was pretty good. Paige, thanks. <laughs> Thank you for having me on. Have a good one. You too.